What's up guys, this is Zinni with What's Dev. In this video, we're gonna talk about JavaScript and what you can do with JavaScript. People always ask me, you know, Tenzin or Zinni, what can you do with JavaScript? You know, JavaScript sounds like a cool language. You say it's easy to learn, but you know, I just don't know. So today I'm gonna tell you, actually, you know what? I don't even know what you can do with JavaScript. So you know what? I'm gonna learn with you. I'm just gonna Google some things, have some pages open. I'll share the screen with you guys. Take the ride together. So apparently you can do machine learning with JavaScript. So let's take a look at it. Oh, wow, TensorFlow. JS, not PY. Wow, you can do machine learning. Okay, artificial intelligence. That's cool, right? That's cool. Brain.js. That's cool. All right. Okay. Machinelearn.js. Okay, these all seem to be libraries for doing machine learning. If you don't know what a library is, a library is just a piece of code written by somebody else that you can use in your code base so that you don't have to do everything from scratch yourself, taking a shortcut basically. It's a dependency, right? In life, we have dependencies. Dependencies are good. Uh, we depend on the fact that our society is sane and nobody's gonna run you over when you're walking by the street. Yeah, so dependencies are good and these are amazing dependencies, all right? So let's take a look at some recent news by Google. It's on techrepublic.com. And the title is JavaScript and Machine Learning. Google shows what's possible using the web programming language, AKA JavaScript. So let me skim through this real quick. Let's see, hmm, WeChat Pac-Man. It says you might not be crying out for a new way to play Pac-Man, but TensorFlow.js has made a novel spin on the classic arcade game possible. Gupta showed, Gupta, Sandeep Gupta, product developer at Google, showed a head controlled version of the game, a JavaScript application running on the WeChat social media messaging platform on a smartphone. After a quick calibration step, Gupta was able to control Pac-Man using head gestures tracked by his phone's camera, looking left to move left and looking right to move right and so on. That's pretty cool if you ask me. That's cool. Let's keep going, guys. Let's keep going. Uber Manifold. What the hell is that? The taxi and delivery company Uber uses machine learning to tackle a wide variety of problems at a very large scale. Hmm, do tell. Helping it achieve that is Manifold, a browser-based application that Uber uses to visualize and debug their machine learning models and data pipelines. Hmm, I still don't know what it does. Let's see. This application runs in the browser and they're using TensorFlow.js for a lot of numerical computations. So for example, distance calculations and visualizations as well as clustering of data, said Gupta, adding that because of the WebGL acceleration, basically what it means is using your hardware, CPU, so if you have a good graphics card and all that stuff, you know, it's gonna use it. They could accelerate these computations more than 100 times, 100x compared to just natively using JavaScript. So basically with TensorFlow.js and using WebGL acceleration, they can do a lot of cool things that they're saying. Okay, basically Uber can calculate the distances. They can, man, it's, it's just way over my head. This is way above my pay grade, man. But I know that it's pretty cool. So let's keep going, guys. Airbnb identity document detection. Online property rental service Airbnb uses machine learning in the browser to stop people from inadvertently uploading sensitive information when adding a picture to their profile. That's cool as fuck. When a user is trying to upload a profile picture to the Airbnb website, sometimes people accidentally use a driver's license picture or a passport picture, dumbasses. I've done that before too, by the way. Which may end up containing personal sensitive information. So basically it hides, it detects sensitive information and hides it without you having to do anything. Pretty cool. Clinic.js provides a tool for sysadmins and software engineers to profile server-side performance in a Node.js environment. That, 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 that doesn't sound that cool because we already know it can do a lot of things in Node.js and all that, you know? So let's keep going, guys. Um, Google Creatability. Creatability. One of the main destinations for showing what is possible using TensorFlow.js is Creatability. Man, I can't speak English. Google's Creative Labs teams showcase for experiments using machine learning. 
Gupta showed a machine learning power demo that allows a person to play a piano keyboard using head gestures. Basically, I can play piano like this. <laughs> I can play piano like that. That's pretty cool. I don't know if it's practical, but you know, they probably have a method to their madness. So I'm not going to doubt Google. So yeah, you can do machine learning with uh, JavaScript. Apparently, I didn't know that. Let's keep going, guys. What? You can make cross-platform mobile apps. And if you don't know what cross-platform mobile apps mean, um, it just means that you can run the app in both iOS, aka iPhone, and Android, which is pretty cool. Basically, you're using the same code base for two different apps on two different operating systems. That's pretty cool. So let's take a look at some popular mobile apps that are written in JavaScript with a JavaScript library called React Native. Um, let's see. Top React Native mobile apps. Facebook. It has 989 million users on a daily basis and it's written in JavaScript. Cool. Facebook Ads Manager. That's how they make all their money. And uh, you know, people who run Facebook ads for their businesses, I use Facebook Ads Manager. Pretty cool. Facebook Analytics. Okay, got it, Facebook, you, you, you do all that. Instagram. It's written in JavaScript. You, just, you can just do, do it with JavaScript, apparently. So, uh, SoundCloud Pulse. That's cool, I don't use SoundCloud as much, but that's pretty cool. Tesla. Tesla app on the phone is created with JavaScript. That's news to me. I didn't know that. Uber Eats, food delivery service. I use Postmates and DoorDash, but I might, you know what? I might try Uber Eats today, maybe. And Skype. I didn't know that either. I didn't know Skype was made with JavaScript. That's so cool. Pinterest is made with JavaScript. Yep. We're talking about mobile apps, guys. Mobile apps, not Mobile apps, Discord. My friend uses Discord all the time for the past five years, six years. Every time he games in PUBG. PUBG and um, what was the other one? The, the new um, game that's pretty good, but not that good. It flopped. I don't remember, but that's not the point. Discord, pretty cool. Um, yeah, Tencent, Salesforce, F8, Walmart, the biggest player in the block. Bloomberg, Grasshopper, Unacademy, I don't know what that is, 2048, okay. Basically guys, everything is written in JavaScript. All mobile apps are written in JavaScript. Everything that matters. Well, that's cool, let's uh, keep going. Oh, you can also create cross-platform desktop apps. Let's take a look at some popular desktop apps that are written in JavaScript. Let's see, we have um, electronjs.org and it has so many apps, but let's just Google, you know, let's go over the page uh, where they just don't give the whole thing to us, but just some of the popular ones that might that we might be interested in. So let's see, WebTorrent, okay. It's the best torrenting software, by the way. Best torrenting software. You can stream while you torrent things. It's not like iTorrent, you know. I just heard, I just heard things, so don't don't think I torn, never. WordPress desktop. Pretty much every mom and uh, pop shops use WordPress. Every small local businesses, they all use WordPress. And uh, the desktop app is written in JavaScript with Electron.js, right? It's a JavaScript library. Ghost desktop. It's a publishing blogging software. It's amazing, it's clean. I have Ghost, uh, but I haven't started making a blog yet which we should man we should we should uh, that's another thing that we're gonna start doing as well we're gonna create a blog we're gonna you know have things there not just for YouTube and video uh, beaker browser I am not sure what this is looking for a reliable reliable peer-to-peer -peer web browser oh wow that's that's really cool it's a participatory browser designed for hackers initially designed as a product that can be hacked beaker browser shifts the web to a open source format and lets hackers modders and creative types make most of their digital skills aka programmers slack slack is written in javascript whatsapp aside from america everybody uses whatsapp even in america people, a lot of people use whatsapp to talk to their families back home or whatever you know man 
pretty much everything is written in JavaScript, apparently. I didn't know that. No idea whatsoever. Let's go to some this page right here. It says Visual Studio Code, Etcher, Raven, Temps, Rami, Instagram Client. That's pretty cool. Uh, Musiques, Music Player, Tusk, Evernote Client, Typora, Writing App, Windows 95. There's a Windows 95, op a whole operating system written in JavaScript. Twitter app, tweet tray, mail spring, you get the point. So we know that you can do machine learning, cross-platform mobile apps, cross-platform desktop apps, and now it says game development and VR games. Wow, that's pretty cool. VR games. I should actually look up VR games in JavaScript. Let's see. VR games in JavaScript. It says web VR virtual reality for the web game development. So apparently you can create full on VR games in JavaScript too, which is kind of cool, which is really cool. And you can do robotics and play with Raspberry Pis, which is super cool. Raspberry Pi projects with cameras. Raspberry Pi projects with Node Red. What can you do with it? Like Node Red with Xiaomi, Yi Light, RG, BW, Smart Bulb. Basically, you can do everything. And lastly, we all know that you can create web apps with JavaScript front end, back end, full stack development. And uh, that's pretty cool because um, Netflix, Facebook, Google, everybody uses JavaScript. All the websites in the world have JavaScript running in the page. You literally can't run any page on the web, web if you don't have JavaScript running, right? Even the pages, HTML and CSS static pages have a little bit of JavaScript still running in the web browser itself. So basically everybody uses JavaScript on the web. So today we learned that JavaScript is a phenomenal language with which we can do machine learning, cross-platform mobile apps, cross-platform desktop apps, game development, VR games, web apps, front, back, full stack. And that's it guys. I will see you in the next video.